Hey everyone, this is Ross. In today's video, we're gonna be harvesting onions. And the way I've done it this year is actually following in a market gardener's footsteps. His name is Charles Dowding. He's in England, he's really well known. Uh, market gardeners, by the way, if you want advice on growing vegetables, they know their stuff, man. They are like the epitome of growing vegetables because they're not just growing them in a huge field. They're growing them very intensively. They're really pushing them to their limit. So I would suggest if you guys really want to see how this technique's perfectly done, go to his channel, Charles Dowding on YouTube, and you can see the video that he's done on multi-sowing onions. I think this is a really great way of doing it. However, this is my first year growing onions. I always had thought onions are probably not worth it. You can get them so cheaply at the store. So we're going to find out if that's really true. If you know homegrown onions are really worth it with the specific varieties you can get. I'm sure there's definitely some varieties that are much far superior to the store, but we've yet to find out. So far, we're using a variety here called the Walla Walla Onion, and this is probably the most classic heirloom, um, heirloom onion for people in northern latitudes. You can see here's, a, here's an onion right here. We have a ton of weeds in here, by the way, but before I get into the weeds and my plan is that if you look closely, this is what multi-sowing is. You have a clump of onions in one hole. Um, and this is really, really brilliant, I think. This is honestly a farce. Look, here's another one right here. We have three onions in the same hole. They don't all get to the biggest size imaginable, right? This isn't like the onion video of all onion videos for extreme size. This is getting the most amount of food in a really small space. And this bed is really only maybe two foot, three foot wide. I think it's about three foot wide and it's about six foot long. And that's really it. I've been growing, again, onions. This is my first year doing it. I'm so happy with the yield. Like, look at this. So that's, you know, in a sense, what multi-sowing does is that you plant at the planting time, you put in the onion slips you know, hopefully you guys started them from seed. You can get them from, obviously from local nurseries, they might have them, but, or you can do sets and plant the sets or the slips, you know, three or four or five in each hole. And they're gonna form, yeah, again, not like the largest onions, although this one is pretty damn big. I mean, this is a nice sized onion that you'd probably see at the store. But then you've also got some other onions here that this one you can tell really didn't do well at all. You have some over here that's much smaller. And we've already harvested a quite a big onion from this location. So it's not like, you know, that's all I'm getting. But certainly the yield in these, these spots is far superior than if I were to just grow one onion, one onion, one onion. It makes a whole lot of sense to me. I mean, I know some of you guys can get really big onions. Like, let's see this clump here. This is what I got out of this clump. That's not bad. I mean, you got some smaller onions, but who cares, right? We're not selling these. And if you are selling these, what you can do is heavy, heavily sow them even heavier than I have. You know, instead of like three to five onions per clump, do like seven or nine. And what you can do is harvest some of them very early for green onions, you know, harvest the stems and sell them like that before they start to bulb up. And that is what Charles Dowding does actually as well, is that he really is making use of this space even better than, than I was, because I'm not using these for green onions. But look, here's another onion, another one, another one. Let's see, this, this clump only again had three onions in it, but I've been harvesting onions before I made this video. This is not the first harvest. What I've been doing is coming in here even though they're not all exactly ready either. I've been coming in here and taking out the largest onion of the clump and using that in the kitchen or giving it away, et cetera, et cetera. So, you know, the yields in here that I'm showing you are actually not entirely representative of what I've been getting. And I've had a couple people, believe it or not, tell me that this wouldn't work. But it's not like, you know, this is not my idea. This is not something that I came up with. This is me just copying 
a really good idea from somebody else and it's worked out, I think, personally, really well. And in fact, this is how I'm gonna be growing onions in the future. I mean, even if I had a lot of land, why grow, why take up more space to bed prep when you can just do this? And they're not exactly ready, right? An onion is ready to be picked when you can see the stem has really starting to deteriorate and yellow and fall over. I guess in a way they sort of have, but the weeds are really suppressing these guys and that's, I think, a big reason why. But we're here in August, almost in August. So this is about the time that these things are gonna be ready, but I find that the soil is just so um, moist right now that it's a good idea to come in here, pick these onions, get them away from that excess moisture, get them away from the rot. Here's a clump right here. This is a real special one. This is, has four in it. And let me pick these guys out of here for you and show you what we got. So this is more along the lines of what I've been seeing per clump. You got one that's you know, on the larger side, and then you've got some that are on the medium side and then on the smaller side. I think that's pretty reasonable, but if I didn't have weeds, which I just couldn't keep up with, and I'm gonna talk about what I'm gonna do with this bed right now, but if I didn't have weeds, we had a better location, we had better soil, these onions would be larger. I mean, this is not the ideal condition. We're on the west side of the house. This area here gets about six or seven hours of light. It does warm up pretty quickly in the spring and I think that's really aided in getting these onions going. The soil is mostly peat moss, really not the most nutritious soil. And there's weeds. I mean, how could I complain about this? But what my plan is now, I wanna talk about that, is that we're gonna, we're harvesting these onions now, obviously because we're afraid of rot, but also I wanna get these things covered in cardboard, put down that cardboard, kill the weeds, kill the grass, and then that way we can plant these figs in it. This is my objective here. They're so large, they're in such large pots that if I were to dig a hole in the native soil, we have a bit of an issue. It would take me forever to dig that hole. So we're gonna plant them in what is or what was a raised bed. You can see more clearly over here, the soil's a bit raised. You can get a better idea what the soil looks like. So that's my objective here is to Put the, you know, plant these figs in here, get the cardboard down, kill all these weeds, and then put rocks down on top of them. And that way we can, you know, really increase the area of figs in this particular section of the yard. That's really been my objective for a while now in this section of the yard. For those of you guys who really don't know, excuse me, what my plan is, what I've been doing is that I've been planting them really closely together. You know, we're talking like three feet at the most. I have some that are a foot and a half, I have some that are two feet apart. So that's my objective here is to get really high production by planting them very closely together. Um, and we're gonna cover this whole area with a tarp, insulate them, um, because we're gonna cut them all the way back to the ground. Cut them about six inches or maybe a foot above grade and then cover that. And that's gonna basically enable us to protect these figs and then next year they're gonna be off to a much better start and we can have a much more dense planting because of it, because we're controlling that size. But this is that nice little onion harvest, guys. That's really the whole objective of this video of what I wanted to talk about. But again, this is really not bad. My next step at this point is gonna be um, kind of tying these up together. You can braid them which is very, very simple. I mean, here, let me just show you guys really quickly. Excuse the camera. So you just take one of these things, take these, the tops here, and just braid them together like this. And come in here, take another one, braid it together, another one, braid it together, and eventually you get yourself this thing here, you tie it off right in here, and then you can hang this up and they'll dry in your house. And then that way, you know, you've got them for storage. You've got them all winter. You know, I'm not gonna be able to eat all these onions right now, that's for sure, but the nice part about them is that you can come in here and obviously store them for a long time. You know, just put them in a room temperature place, maybe a bit on the colder side, 
that's dry, you know, and really our houses are really the great place for that because the house is usually at room temperature and it's usually on the drier side. And if you have a fan circulating in your, in your room or whatever it is, you know, that's going to help aid in drying these. It's the same way, really the same method I use for our garlic and how to dry these. So I want to thank everybody here for watching this one. Thank you guys for sticking with me on this one. I know the vegetable videos are not as entertaining for some of you guys, but yeah, it's pretty important. And I, you know, just because we grow a lot of figs doesn't mean you can't enjoy the other stuff. And I encourage a lot of you guys to do the same. Check us out on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, guys. We'll catch you for tomorrow's video. Take care. We'll see you soon.